this makes me realize how how much behind I am on housekeeping. I mean, all of this stuff is optional. You don't have to do any of this stuff until it becomes a bottleneck for your workflow. When I was making the Mixing and Reaper series, every time I would make one of these videos, I'd be in the editing process and it'd make me realize how many things were slowing down the creative process in the mixing that are totally unrelated to um, the mixing process, like unrelated to getting good sounds and things like that. So things like searching for plugins, not having effects chains built already, not having track templates built already, not having my impulse responses organized. That's still a problem. <laughs> um, not having like a, a mixing template that already has my three favorite reverbs in it already set up. Things like SWS auto color to be able to uh, instantly identify different um, tracks based on their color, um, which are automatically assigned by their name. So when I start a mix, I can just go to insert track from template and uh, effects tracks. This is an old template, so this is probably not going to work too well. So I've just got this effects bus and it has a bunch of different reverbs in it that I like, some lo-fi effects, some um, wideners, different delays. You know, one click to add that to the project, pretty simple. And also from track template, I've got basic track folders. And so these are the tracks, the, the typical things you have in a project, drum bus, percussion bus, bass bus. You may not have them in every project. So like the last mix I had, had no keys, it had no percussion, um, but it had all these other things. Then as you bring things in, like, okay, this is my, my, my bass track. And that just goes in there. It actually speeds things up a lot by not having to make a track, name it, color it, maybe assign a different track layout to it, all those sorts of things. Those sorts of things I think are important in, to do. I don't know. Sometimes it's more fun than the actual work of, of doing the mix. I found the process of actually recording a mix from beginning to end and seeing all the different little time bottlenecks that are, or things that I stumbled on was very important. So I became more efficient in the mixing um, and I hopefully making better creative decisions each time I, I did it. You know, Joel Wanasek from uh, Nail the Mix and, and that stuff. He has a video course called Speed Mixing. I made the Reaper version of that for them. And so I was watching his course and I'd write down all the little things that he did in Cubase and I did the Reaper version of those things. Um, so things like auto color, things like the templates, effects chains. Um, yeah, lots of little things like that. And you don't have to use all those little tricks because there's, there's often like, I don't know, four or five different ways to do different things. And you know, thinking about your workflow, thinking about what you're constantly like struggling with, or, you know, if you're spending 15 seconds looking for an EQ, why not just make it one second with the EQ you use every time? So for me, re-EQ, I press the letter Q and I've got an EQ on that track. I never have to look for an EQ. I just select the track and press Q. I even have it set up so that if I have an, uh, an item and I press Q, that goes there. If I want to see the effects chain for a track, I can press the tilde key and that comes up whether there's things filled in it or not. Fast effects finder it can be useful. So it's just a search box for, for effects and your most recent things should be there. 